Good morning. Maybe you're as surprised as I am that I'm up here. C.S. Lewis, in his book, Mere Christianity, writes the following. I am trying here to prevent anyone from, really, from a really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus Christ. They say, I'm already accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I cannot accept his claim to be God. That is one thing we cannot say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. No, he would either have to be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or he would have to be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or he was only a madman or something worse. You could shut him up for a fool, you could spit on him, and you could kill him, or you could try to kill him as a demon, or you could choose to simply fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any other patronizing nonsense about him just being a great human teacher. God did not leave us that option. He did not attend to. So who did Jesus claim to be? Who does the Bible say that Jesus Christ is? This morning, through scripture only and song, we want to share with you the story of Jesus. And maybe it's a story you've heard a thousand times. Maybe for you, it might be the story that you hear for the first time at completion. Let's go directly to the word. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. The prophet writes, For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord God Almighty will accomplish this. And so Matthew begins the story. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi came from Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have simply come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all of Jerusalem with him. He had called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Tell me the story of Jesus. Ride on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweet as that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the heart. Get this thing later. That'd be good. The psalmist records it this way. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the seas resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and peoples in his faithfulness. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and Sing. 
Jesus is led into the wilderness to be tempted. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man will not live on bread alone. So the devil led him up to a high place, and he showed him an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all authority, all their authority and splendor, as it has been given to me. I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be all yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil then led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to regard you safely. And they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him for more opportune time. First Corinthians chapter ten thirteen, reminding us of temptation. Paul wrote, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Something I should have said at the beginning. Uh, when we sing the Tell Me the Story of Jesus song, we are just singing the verses of the first three and then the last one will actually sing it in its entirety. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the days that are past, how for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell Some of you want to sing the chorus, you have to be patient. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, Jesus begins to teach. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bless those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Reminds me of our scripture reading this morning. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is my Father's word.
Luke chapter 15, Jesus continues to teach the people. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them, and not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, and he set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth of wild living. And after he spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went out and he hired himself to a citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed the pigs. He longed to, have, to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will set out, and I will go back to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, and his father was filled, was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, and he threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. The son, to, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and killed it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard the music and the dancing. He called out to one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come home, he replied. Your father has killed the fatted calf because he, was, because he was, um, he has been brought back safe and sound. The older brother became angry, and he refused to go in. So his father went out, and he pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeying your orders, yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fatted calf for him? My father, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead as alive again. He was lost and is now found. It's been a long time since I said this. Um, God is calling the prodigal, come without delay. Hero, hear him calling, calling now for thee. Though you wander so far from his presence, come today. story. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 42. That Jesus went out with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell to his face, to the, fell with his face to the ground, and he prayed, "My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will." Then he returned to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. "Couldn't you even keep watch with me for an hour?" he asked Peter. "Watch and pray that you too will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak." 
And so he went away a second time and he prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him, tell how he liveth again. Love in the story so tender, clearer than Then the governor's soldiers, they took Jesus in the praetorium and they gathered the whole, country, the whole company of soldiers around him and they stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him and then they twisted together a crown of thorns and they set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and then they knelt in front of him and they mocked him, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him and they took the staff and they struck him on the head again and again. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe and they put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to, be cruci to crucify him. And as they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, where they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. When I
It was after the Sabbath on the dawn of the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and they became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and they worshiped him. And Jesus said, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to, to Galilee. There they will see me. The celebration, Revelation 19, verses 4 through 10. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and they worshiped God who was seated on the throne and they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, uh, you, you who fear him, both great and small. When I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the, like the roar of rushing waters, like the, pedals, like the peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and, his bri and her bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Then the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. And as I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and your sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for this is the spirit of prophecy who bears witness and testimony to Jesus. Okay. Maybe you've heard the story a lot. Maybe you haven't heard the story very much. But the question of what you do with the story of Jesus is very important. See, it really doesn't matter if you just think of him as a moral teacher or you view him just as a historical person. The important question to ask yourself is, what does Jesus Christ mean to my life? Because clearly it's just more than a story. Jesus Christ is our only hope for today and for tomorrow. So we encourage you to make a decision today now that you've heard the whole story to either choose him as your savior. And if you've already done that, maybe it's time now for you to say, I need to go deeper than I've ever gone before. 